Very briefly, I want to cover some gaps that might not have made a lot of sense in what I initially put out regarding this ritual process. This ritual process is going to last an entire year. So this is to get you comfortable evoking. Now, let me be very clear. This is a process that I myself have worked out exclusively with Andrew Malas, with this particular spirit of the Goetia. So, he and I have come up with a contract that is spiritually binding. I have given, he has given, and we have both collaborated on this. What I am presenting is a collaboration between a physical being, myself, and a spiritual being, Andrew Malice. The contract was written that he has allowed himself to be summoned, conjured, evoked with certain principles that are being relaxed. The question has come up, how come we're not using a triangle of manifestation? Well, if you look at the triangle of manifestation, it fits on a number of different triangles within the tree of life, okay? In particular, we're talking about Mercury, Venus, and Luna, okay? Or Hod, Netzach, and Yasad. Now, you are actually in that triangle. When you are opening the house on the moon, you are, in essence, merging both the astral and the physical world together. Briefly, there's also a powerful mercurial spirit there. There's also a powerful Venusian spirit there. The triangle is complete. You just don't need to build one. This is what happens when you're dealing with a real magician. Most other magicians are stuck playing checkers, right? I am dealing with third level chess. So, all the components are there. Whether or not you see them immediately, that's for this entire year for you to figure out. How have I and Andrew Malice put this process together so that you could evoke without necessarily following all the protocols that all the books, or I should say, ripped off second-rate information that's been regurgitated through print and then cut and paste on the internet over and over and over and over and over again ad nauseum has dictated to tell you how you know what to do but without any real explanation of it so I promise you it's all there okay other point do not approach other Goetian spirits in the way that I have set up with Andrew Malice. This is exclusive with him because of what he is about that this process has been formulated and a lot of his offerings will go to help cover the lax protocols that are coming into play. All right, I have done this so you are safe that you can have this experience that you can actually evoke and you can change the physical world through manipulation of the astral. When you are opening up that house on the moon, that is an astral temple. That is a lunar temple. That is a magic temple. In truth, you could do that with all the other planetary spheres. When I release the Grimoire, which is coming probably in a couple months, maybe a little bit longer, I will give you the full detail on how to open up each and every planetary sphere or planetary temple upon the physical plane. This is information that's not out there. This, this, you know, if you don't, I mean, I'm not saying don't listen to other occultists, but what I'm saying is don't listen to other occultists about this type of information because I know how well guarded it is. I know who technically has it, who hasn't, had it and and to be honest I know that there would be a great deal of, of very high level occultists who've already sent me threats throughout the years anyways 
who aren't really happy or would not be happy that I'm releasing this particular side because this is the part that's been kept out of the mainstream and for very obvious reasons, when you start working with it, you will understand, holy fuck, not only can I evoke a spirit to my place, I can also evoke an entire planetary sphere. The implications of that are huge are very big and it opens up the game in ways that most magicians are so focused and this is the way I know how to do something, it's the only way I know, I know how to do something, that it bothers them immensely that there is another application that they can't just lord over other people with and feel superior to because they're playing you know, first grade kindergarten level occultism and this is like you know, K through 12, all right? So this is a full education. And this is basically being done through a collaboration with myself and a spirit that I feel can really, really, really change things. So follow the protocol, all right? Also, the Knights of the Round ritual, it's on the blog. I'm gonna go ahead and post a link to that ritual here on this video. Other questions I'm getting. Yes, this is a very safe ritual. You're dealing with uh, St. George or Good George. You're dealing with a powerful moon goddess. And you're dealing with a spirit that has willingly entered into a contract. So no one's out to get you. No one is out to get you. But, as always, banish, 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 banish. Because even their vibrations are really, really strong. Even really beneficial spirits have very powerful vibrations. And in their, you know, their form, especially, here's mostly what, what I am semi-concerned about is someone's going to open up this lunar circle, this lunar temple, which is an opening in the astral world and really kind of like the feel of it and decide, eh, maybe I'm not going to banish the circle. That would be the dumbest thing. You wouldn't necessarily have to worry about the spirits at that point. You would have to worry about the fact that you have an open portal to the astral world. And the astral world is kind of like the internet in some way. It's a great place, but there's some dark places of the internet. There are some dark places of the astral world. You don't just want a big open hole where anything can kind of, you know, good or bad can pop in and look around or, and then you feel pulled into it and everyone else around you who may go in that room also gets introduced to it. So it's like a big dose of stuff that you just want to open up, do your ritual, get out, clean up your stuff, and then put it the fuck away, all right? Don't just leave it open. That's not okay. So it's not the spirits. It's the actual locale that I really want you guys to banish everything. Banish everything. But in particular, close that lunar temple out after each use. Also, I know some of you are going to experiment with opening other planetary realms. That's fine. But... I would prefer that you just worked with the lunar realm for now. In a couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months, I will release the process for opening up the solar temple because you'll be doing so much astral work, so much lunar work, you're going to need to spend a small amount of time at least in some powerful solar energy so you yourself don't become imbalanced. Yes, the cross, the, the Kabbalistic cross, does indeed rebalance you. That is true. But working inside spheres is extremely, um, it saturates every fabric of your being. And so occasionally getting into a solar sphere will just help rebalance you all that much more. It's not one of those things that you step in three or four times into this lunar sphere and suddenly you're crazily imbalanced. No, it's, it's very much an incremental process. 
So by the time, you know, two, three months come in and I'm like, all right, this is how you open up a solar temple, you're going to be fine anyways. But this is just a nice energetic balance and you're really going to appreciate what that feels like in comparison to a lunar temple, all right? I don't love to use the words trust me, but being a magician for 20 plus years now, all right, with honest to God, true, true mentors who were top of their game and other magicians came to and other orders came to and they would sell information and they did other things that, eh, you know, whatever made me not so happy about them with, but they... People came to them because they knew their shit. And yes, I inherited that. And I'm giving it to you. So do as I say. Not because I'm telling you because it's a power trip for me, but because I want you to have these same really just mind-blowing experiences that I have. And then one day you can share it with somebody else. But you'll have the process and the protocol to go with it because this is a step by step by step by step process. Each step prepares you for the one coming up next. This isn't just crazy ass internet games where you're gonna run around and be like, oh, I found information here. Oh, I found information here. Well, what about this? You know, fuck it. I don't care about all this other outside info. If they had the ability to affect the world on this particular level, they would have, or if they cared, they would have begun to, to, to introduce this process and get people involved. The fact is, one, they don't have it, which is really mostly the case. Two, they're too far fucking elitist and worry about their petty little nonsense to really want to change the world in a powerful, very strong, positive way. And I'm not kidding when I say I have, I have been physically threatened death threats and other things because there are individuals out there who realize oh fuck this is like a hidden power source that we've really kind of kept up and I'm not saying super high level individuals but enough and even occultists who are like how fucking dare you give information out to sheep so you know understand that they have made sure that these publishing houses have made sure that you guys get pretty much the, the absolute umbles. So, you know, way back in the old days when they used to cut open a pig and the kings and the priests and, and the nobility got to eat high on the hog and got all the great choices of meat, those occultists make sure that you guys get the shit-filled entrails that just fall out the bottom and no one wants anyways and then they bake it up and then sell it to you and like here here's magic yay so understand that this is the kind of shit you people have been been fed I'm saying no more I'm saying here here is the choice cuts of of total knowledge and I'm gonna put it out there so take advantage of this. Take advantage of it. Follow the process. Um, banish. Banish, banish, banish. Do your best with it. It's meant to make you struggle a little bit here and there. To learn. It's meant to make you feel like, wow, I am really entering into a hyperdimensional reality. You are. You are dealing with intelligences that are outside of you. But, this has all been put together, binded through Saturn, who, trust me, you are really going to love at the end of this. When you understand the true Saturnine process and why all these fucking morons refer to him as Satan, just you will understand why they are so un, almost ir irreparably stupid when you realize that Saturn saying, okay, this is the contract, this is the process, I'm enforcing it. Not that myself or Andrew Malas would, would go against it, but when you have such a powerful force of Saturn saying, okay, this is the binding contract that you both willingly agreed into, I am going to maintain the structure of it, there is amazing amounts of protection in that. And you people will begin to understand why that's so important, especially when dealing with spirits, and especially with dealing with spirits that don't necessarily have the greatest 
of reputation from real experiences of other magicians. Because like the Goetia, that's been called the demons and the evil spirits. It was called the demons and the evil spirits because these spirits actually did and produced results. So guess what? Other magicians, Christians, whatnot, Christians didn't want you working with them because you could get things without their benefit of their, you know, evil God, but other magicians who were just elitist assholes didn't want you dealing with these spirits anyways because they wanted you to have to come to them, they would charge you money, they would work with the spirits that would actually get shit done, and, you know, they would get paid. So, taking you out of the equation, calling them demons and evil and whatnot, made you, disempowered you, made you weak. Okay? That's why. So, Powerful spirit named Andrew Malice has said, yes, I will engage in a process. I will go after individuals whom we all know who we're talking about here. All you have to do is evoke him, tell him that you're behind him, tell him your own personal stories, develop a working relationship with him, get to know him. This, th what, what this does for him is it gives him more energy, it gives him more acknowledgement, it changes the reputation surrounding these spirits, which is very important, and it increases his standing. So yeah, you're right, he benefits from it, but he should benefit from it, as should you. This is what's called mutual benefit. So you get protection, you also get to learn from a spirit. He gets to perform side jobs for you. You get to you get to give him offerings. He gets to go do a giant over overlapping uh, blanket job. Okay, of making sure that a good portion of our stolen goods collectively is returned, but also work with us individually. So this is, a, this is a powerful process. Stick with it as much as you can. Understand that I have gone through having this experience and said, okay, I know what the steps of effective evocation is. These are the steps that I don't think people are going to be able to do just yet. How can I still in, include all the ingredients, include all the structuring, lay down all the foundations in a way that I can put it out there in a broad, wide spectrum and people still have results. That is what is on the blog. And if you want to intellectually debate me and whine and bitch and cry because it doesn't have certain symbols and it doesn't have you know certain flowery, hollow speeches that most people are used to, then you know wait till, unfortunately, wait till the end of the year and then you can see all the other people's experiences and then kind of piss and moan at me that you weren't involved. Or you can just hop in, see what I'm about, see what I'm putting out there. And then from an actual practicing magician side point, because I know the majority of you are, are, are armchair at best, armchair occultists. Then you could say, you know what, Bearheart, wow, I did this entire process and uh, seemingly everyone else got stuff, but I didn't. What's the problem? And I'd be like, well, dude, because you are so trapped in this uh, false reality, this, this, this corrupted magical system that you think is the only way because you bought a book and you read it a bunch of times and you felt real superior over other people. Guess what? Sorry, man. Bigger perspective much greater knowledge out there from higher level people who do real work, who practice occultism and have done so. So I'm opening it up. Boom. Here it is. Wide open, big current. Anyone can jump in. But let me tell you, the current is going where it's going. There's no redirecting. There's no misdirecting. This current is direct. It is flowing right towards the people whom we know we're talking about. And everyone who everyone who hops in the water gets gets to play a part and gets benefit from it. So no more just treading your toes in and thinking about how cool it would be. If you're going to jump in, jump the fuck in. Okay? If not, you're going to get left behind. So it's going to become real obvious here who's in the process and who's not. 
And my time, honestly, for the next year is going to be devoted towards the people who are jumping in this river or who are going to jump in this river, who hear about it here in a little while, and that's it. I, you know what? I mean, all the questions about what if, what if, what if, what if, that's fine. Start them now. Yes, I know. Um, you share a room with other people. Yeah, banish the hell out of the work that you've done, okay? And I will get to those people about that. But if you're going to question me about, well, this book says this, and this career more says this, and I heard this guy behind a 7-Eleven, and he was whispering it in this other drunk guy's ear, and he was like, oh, and it sounded kind of a cultist, but I wasn't sure. I'm not even going to respond. Long fucking past that, okay? So just to clear it up, do not evoke other spirits in the way that I am telling you to evoke Andrew Malice, because this is a very specialized circumstance thing where he benefits, I benefit, you benefit, everybody benefits, all right? Um, do the process. Don't skip parts. Don't add parts. Don't think that somehow you're special, okay? Do those steps as they are laid out. This will cover you the entire way, all right? Make the offerings, okay? All you do to make the offering is you pour the port, make the steak, set it there on top of his sigil. That's it. Just say, hey, thank you, Andrew Malice. This is the offering. That's it. It's as simple as that. Let it hang there for, you know, and if you've got other people who share that room, take it outside. Put, the, put a drawing of the sigil under it. Set it there. Let it sit there for 12 hours. Come back. Bury it. Pour the wine over it. Scoop dirt over it. It's done. You're done. Okay? Um, banish the lunar temple. And that will clear the area. You can go back to normal waking consciousness. Try to do this at least once a week. No more. Don't let more than three weeks go by before you actually re-evoke him, okay? And when you evoke him, just talk to him like a normal, just whatever. He will introduce himself, you'll introduce yourselves, and after you guys get to know each other, you can start to have very in-depth conversations. Um, this is a spirit that you can actually look up. Look up information about them. Find out what other people have been saying, and then judge for yourself, because I think I've, I've given a very good example of who he is. He, is a, he used to be a local deity, uh, he, his, his people were massacred. They went through a whole lot of atrocity. His own personal mythology and his own personal history is marred kind of in lies and deceit that he overcame. And he understands what it's, what it is to be stolen from. And he understands what it is to have things taken from you that shouldn't have been. And he understands the need to go after those individuals who have committed those offenses against you. Very kind but he's still an extremely powerful individual. Uh, and there's a great mystery about that big snake that he's always wrestling and has full control over. So talk to him, get to know him, allow him to begin to relate information back to you, just kind of like any other relationship is. All right? Start incrementally. Don't jump in and just think you know him. Be respectful. He's going to be respectful. And I understand this is a brand new meeting, and this is a huge step for most of you. So just take it slow, all right? Follow the steps. The process is fine. Don't apply this process to any other spirit. You can, if you want to, still evoke the other 71. And if there's a huge, huge desire to do that, I will release a far more general evoking ritual where you can evoke the other 71. But I think once you start working with Andrew Malice, I think you'll kind of get it. Past this year, absolutely. Go jump in the water. Go evoke the other 71 spirits, kind of like I was suggesting. But that came, that initial suggestion of evoking the 72 Goetia spirits was, I believe, the initial seed planted for what happened next with me and Andrew Malice. This is how they work. They get me focused on a current, and then one of them jumps out and says, hey, I'm the guy who brought you here. This is why. Boom. And when he revealed the whole plan, I was like, fuck me. That's a great fucking plan. So 
I made the video of the 17 Galatia before this idea hit. And when that happened, the, the plan that me and him hashed out, I was like, wow, this could work. And trust me, we'll hop in and it will. So the more people who get behind this, the better, the more power gets behind it, but follow my steps. And you know, if you don't get results by the end of the year, fucking hate me. All right. Just tell everyone, <laughs> yeah, it didn't work, bah, you know, whatever, you know, you know, you could hate me more than the people you should hate about the whole 2012 nonsense. Okay. I, I could be the bad guy at the end of the year. Okay. If it doesn't work and if nothing really happens and you feel no different and you haven't seen your life change more towards a magical life, then absolutely hate me. You'll have full on reason to hate me. But until that point, trust me. All right. I haven't steered any of you wrong yet. And I don't plan on it. And I can see the response that people have. I don't want to steer you wrong. So I don't give you crazy weird dates. I don't make up crazy promises or whatnot. I'm just saying this is what I know from experience. Experience in doing. Because when I was learning this, there was no internet. I couldn't just, you know, scramble around and be like, oh, what about this? What about this? No, my, my mentors grounded me in effective ritual magic because... I mean, if I wasn't having experiences, I could be like, you guys are total fucking frauds. But no, boom, spirits. So I give you the process. Work with it. Enjoy it. Immerse yourself, but banish it. Have time for your own mundane world because living in the magical sphere is not possible. Visiting it, absolutely. Having having touches with it absolutely but you are a physical being so spend a lot of time in the physical because if you do magical work then the time that you spend really enjoying the physical the stronger those physical vi vibrations get and guess what your astral workings manifest so <laughs> that this is the difference between myself and other bullshit occult out there is they would tell you Live in the astral world all the time in the world of fairies and unicorns. No! Fuck no! Visit that realm, the astral world. Don't visit that stupid ass realm. Do your work there. Come back and then live, you know, an earthly, sensual, awake and aware life. And those vibrations around you, your astral body, will manifest stronger, faster, more permanently in the physical world. You're meant to live in the physical world as a physical being, but you're meant also to be aware of the other worlds. Why? Because all the other worlds are pulling towards the physical world. They're being pushed and compelled and kind of caught in sort of a, a whirlpool being densified. I know these things. So, Follow the process, then go live an amazing fucking adventure-filled life. That's the key. Do magic on the side, go live an adventure-filled life, and everything will manifest the way it is meant to. All right? In, in, in total harmony with what real nature is, and that is the nature of everything. Not just nature as in trees and forests and lakes. That's one aspect of nature. Dumbass druids who are like, oh, it's all about nature. And like, if you understood nature, you would understand that nature meant the nature of the universe, not just a fucking tree. Okay? In harmony with nature means in harmony with the ebb and flow of the universe. Much bigger scope. And that's what we're dealing with. If you got questions pertaining to this, I'm getting to those. But I hope this clears up some of the process about what we're doing. Okay? Because I know it was sort of this big idea I pushed out there, and there were parts of it that weren't necessarily made clear. So get to it, start evoking. And start start talking about it. Start being open about it. What what experiences are you guys having? Let's have a collective, and 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 go from there. So get to work.